All right, welcome back everybody. Nathan Wilson, Driving Dreams Restorations. Here we go again. Uh, this is, I guess, part two or three or four or five of the uh, seat restoration video. So this is the seat frame, um, the two sides of it, uh, where they connect in the middle to the part that we did on the previous video. Um, so they're actually the same. Um, all four of the corner jacks are the same, and these two jacks are the same. So. Um, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to get this bigger part out of the way and just uh, get to work on, on this one. So, um, unfortunately, this car uh, was stored or when, when it started to sit, um, it was with this, this screw jack was all the way out. Um, and actually, all, all three of them were all the way out. So, um, that that's not the best because uh, all that means all this exposed surface all of these um, the, the, the the screw jack here is all exposed so now it's all rusty so we're gonna have to work a little bit harder to clean it um, sometimes you get lucky and if all this was kind of down and closed when the car sat for however long it sat um, this stuff didn't get exposed and it's still nice and clean in there but it is what it is no matter what we're cleaning it basically from from start to finish so um, these, uh, you might want to mark them, maybe nick them. Uh, they're, they're all unique, so as long as you take some pictures or you have this video to show you the, the way that they went, this one's slightly more curved. Um, all six of these cable pieces are unique. The cables themselves um, are pretty close, like there's one long one, and then these two are pretty damn close, so uh, you just want to remember which one came out of which. I think the shortest one is in the middle and then the slightly longer one is on this end. And um, But just, you know, take lots of pictures and, and videos and stuff like I always say. Of course, you guys don't really have to worry about that too much because I'm taking damn videos. So these are just held on by uh, these little plates right here. And then it slides right out. So I take all this apart so I can go and get it all sandblasted and cleaned up. Um, these cables should move, like when they're, when they're free like this and you try to spin this, this should move pretty freely in there. Um, so these don't. So obviously they're, they're jammed up in there pretty good. Let's see if I can get this one out. Oh, boy. So you see this sleeve, there's like a um, nylon sleeve in there, uh, I guess to protect the cable. So it's a little bit tight going in and out. Um, there's the cable, there's the end of it. It's like a square shaft, I guess. Um, cable doesn't look too bad, the ends look okay. Sometimes they get kind of torn up on the ends. This one's a little bit jacked up. Let's see if I can catch this on the on the film, on the camera. You can see where that's kinda, maybe you can see where that's kinda chipped up there. Um, so we'll see, maybe this one will still be good. Um, there's typically enough, I think there's enough here that if you had to kinda cut a little bit off of that, you probably would still be okay because there's usually enough play in there. Um, because the square part is, as you can see, it's round up to about here and then this is all square, so it gives you just enough, but hopefully you won't have to do any of that type of stuff. Um, so I already did um, another one earlier, and I'm taking, uh, I've had it in the parts washer actually overnight, so I should be able to do this video a little quick and um, magically uh, get to the next part. which I guess no matter what for you guys, it's magically to the next part when they, even if I do it tomorrow, uh, where the parts are clean. But um, I sandblasted them originally, and I, I don't know if I'll have this in another clip, but um, these, all these parts I had sandblasted, uh, the first ones, um, and um, I, I kind of got a bunch of, obviously, sandblast dirt in there, so I wasn't sure if that's gonna be the best, uh, the best method. So to loosen these, so I've got them in the parts washer now, so we'll see. Uh, to loosen these, it is a 15 16 socket. And they usually break free. If 
somewhat easy. And it's just like a, you know, one or two turns or so. There's not much on there. So this one's actually coming out not like they normally do. The, the screwed part must have rusted on here pretty good and so it's coming all out together. Normally it's not supposed to do that so I'll have to get some vice grips or something and separate that. I'll see if the next one does it the way it should. Yeah this one's, this one's pretty rusted. There we go but that's the way it's, it should come off like this. This little nut comes off and then you have this screw to turn. And all this, this little screw thing does, man, all this screw thing does is, uh, it's like a spacer that um, goes, well, I'll show you in a second, it goes in between there. They shouldn't, normally you can hand turn them off, but this one's pretty rusty, so um, this just goes into that hole, let's see if I can zoom in a little bit, goes into that hole to um, hold this thing in place. So that was their design. It really doesn't serve any other function that I can see. Um, it just screws in there to hold this in place. So once you have that out, this whole thing will come out like this. And then we have to do the roll pins. So let's do all three of these real fast. And then we'll get to the roll pins on the other side. <laughs> all right. Whoa. I'm not even going to edit that out. All right. Knock the camera over a little bit. Let's move this so we don't do that again. All right. Jeez. Come on, baby. I should probably just have this on the impact. It might be a little bit easier, but um, same with this. So once we get these out, um, like I said in the other video, most of this stuff is just cleaning things and you know uh, getting rid of the old gunky grease, and that's how that comes apart. This definitely needs to be sandblasted. Um, you know, a lot of people are like, well, it doesn't matter, it's under the seat, um, but, you know, this this is getting some surface rust on it, it's starting to look kind of bad, so it's more than just for looks, you know, once you sandblast this down, wipe it down with some, some wash and some alcohol, and then paint it, uh, you're preventing, you know, at least 90% preventing, you know, more rust. Um, you could spray these with Pour 15, might not be a bad idea, instead of just regular black paint. Um, Pour 15 seems to do a decent job of stopping the rust. So um, you could, if you weren't too worried about getting everything maybe super duper clean, I guess you could um, you could just leave them like this and, and get them all cleaned up, throw this whole thing in the parts washer. I don't know. It's not that big of a deal to do the, uh, the roll pins to get these out completely. So might have to move this camera a little bit to the end of the table so that we can wrap these roll pins out. So you want to start, if you guys aren't familiar with roll pins and everything, you don't want to use uh, a punch or anything that's more narrow than this piece. Let me see if I can zoom in a little. I guess that's about as zoomed as we're going to get. Um, so really for the first whack or two, you can... This one's bad, man. Holy crap. All right. You can use just a flat, you know, hammer. And then you get one that, you want to get a punch that's really close to the same size as the roll pin and start to knock it through. And this one's tough. They usually go out a little bit smoother. This is a pretty bad seat frame, so. And I would also normally have this in a vise, but um, this is where my camera's set up, so. Trying to do it bouncing around on the table. Alright, so this is a since my punch is is uh, tapered, that's about as far as I can go before I mess around and get that punch uh, stuck. So I have this uh, file that just happened to be about the right size, and I'm using that to knock. 
it the rest of the way out. So, <clears throat> roll pin is out. Stick it with the other roll pin. And that's that. <clears throat> so this is the screw jack part. Um, let's see if this spins the way that it should. You should be able to, even when they're old and rusty like this, just stick the cable in there by hand and turn these things. And it's somewhat working. So this one's pretty, pretty jacked up. Most of the time you can still do this by hand. But when this is all said and done and this is all cleaned up, oh, look at that shit. Jeez. This must have been a Georgia car. Look at this clay coming out. Oh, God. Anyway, when this is all cleaned up, man, and properly done, uh, this will turn just easy as can be with your hand and you can run it up and down. And even through the, when the cable's in the whole uh, shaft there, the tube, uh, it'll spin freely. I mean, um, you know, people will get frustrated maybe when they, you know, they test the motor and the motor seems to be working, but, you know, um, it's just having a really, really tough time. I mean, this, when this stuff is all gunked up like this and jammed up and maybe even rusted together in some of these extreme cases, um, you know, the motor can only do so much. So, um, that's what, you know, that's what we're here for. So this is why we do all of these steps. This seems like a lot, you know, taking this whole seat frame apart like this, uh, and every single piece and then taking these apart. Um, but I think it kind of has to be done. And, um, you know, I see a lot of cars, I'll go ahead and, um, just for, to shorten the video, I'm gonna go ahead and take this part, uh, apart right now while, and I'll just do this one and, uh, the others are pretty much identical. So, um, I'll just do this one for the camera and then we'll get on to the next step. So these normally, I mean, we'll see, normally you can just kind of hold the nut with your hand and loosen with the... The screw gun or a screwdriver um, always put the nuts back on screws like that I don't know it's just a habit I don't lose them and they stay together with the right ones um, but you know it's interesting I uh, I've, I've restored 33 now of these um, at this point in time and a lot of most of them from like the ground up and I've come across you know, I've dealt with in or out, um, you know, buying and selling and stuff like that. Ones that I didn't restore, um, probably hundreds of, of these 60s Lincolns. And um, it's it's funny to me how a lot of times you see in the ad, it'll say, uh, you know, rotisserie restoration or frame off restoration is a good one because you can't take this car off the frame. So whenever I see that frame off restoration, I already know these people are full of shit. Um, but... Um, you know, they, they say full restoration or and a lot of times people even have receipts. I got a, actually a car in my garage right now where uh, there are receipts for $63,000 restoration. And when you look under the seat at this seat frame, it looks like this. It looks, I mean, it's, you can see where, you know, somebody sprayed a little spray paint on it and stuff. But this stuff, I mean, you can tell when you look in these, you know, when in these grooves, um, when this is off and properly sandblasted, all the nooks and crannies and cracks are going to be nice and clean and smooth and everything. Um, it's always interesting to me. I've actually, uh, I don't know if I've ever come across one um, that, you know, was actually done properly. Um, so I just, I think it's interesting that people spend $100,000 for a fully restored, you know, rotisserie restoration type crap and stuff like this wasn't done you know so uh, maybe you know people are always asking me what should i look for when i go to look at a lincoln well you don't want to be super picky if you're looking at a 15 or twenty thousand dollar car but if you're looking at one uh you know in the high end that's supposedly all restored take a look under the seat look at the seat frame look at these screw jacks um see if any of this stuff has been done because uh if not in my opinion it's not a full restoration um so this is the inside. Um, now again, these gears, the ball bearings, um, all the little gears are all really uh, well made. They're all strong steel gears. There's no plastic or even brass or anything in here. Um, so, you know, I'm, like I said, I'm a fan of, of the, you know, how well built these cars were. But, you know, you can only do so much over time when the grease, like, a lot of people will look at this and say, well, you know, it's, it's still full of grease, so it's good. But I mean, you can see where the grease is so packed in here that it's not 
really doing anything. Um, let's see if I can move this now with a cable. There you go. So as the as the cable turns the motor, you know, the motor turns, it turns the cable, um, you know, to, when the solenoid is, is engaged and all that like we talked about in the last video. So now here's uh, farther down the line when it gets to this point, the cable turns this little gear in here, um, which obviously turns this gear. And as this gear turns, um, you should be able to see this part go down. Now this one's pretty bad and rusty um, here for demonstration purposes. Let me grab one that I've already cleaned. Yeah, big difference, huh? <laughs> so, this is held still by the seat frame, and this is obviously held still by the rest of it. So, as this uh, as this turns, you see this. Hopefully, you can see that going in, and I'll probably run it uh, when I get it all together. Um, and I, I guess I don't need this. I don't know why I'm doing that, but. Um, it basically screws in like that so because this is held tight it's uh, almost like an actuator so that and that's how you see this uh, you know you this is what you'll see from the outside uh, it'll just go in and, out, and that's what lifts the seat so that's pretty much the whole process between the previous video and, and what I'm showing you now um, you see the difference I mean these uh, I haven't even polished this one up yet I hit them on the uh, wire wheel um, so uh, but back to what I was saying about the grease. Okay, so yeah, this is packed full of grease. Great. But you can see that as the gear is spinning, and the grease isn't doing shit because over the years that grease has just become so packed and hardened and pushed out of the way, it's not doing anything. So, you know, I don't know if you guys ever saw like in the, in the parts stores a lot of times they used to have like the... Um, the Lucas oil uh, little gear thing that shows you what the oil's supposed to be doing and all that. This grease should be down in there and all those cracks. And so um, the actual uh, gears here, you know, where the where the metal meets the metal, uh, there's not much lubrication at all, if any. So um, this is why we're doing what we're doing. So what I typically do, um, this is one of the biggest tips of this whole process. Is you can see down in there, there's a little uh, bearing looking thing. Um, you definitely want to get that out with your screwdriver before you start cleaning everything because you will lose it. Ask me how I know. And uh, keep you a little magnetics parts thing here and stick it in there with the rest of them because um, you don't want to lose that. And then after that, this thing is actually, um, you can see as you start moving some of the, it's actually shaped a lot differently than it looks right here, but um, I typically get as much of the uh, gunky grease out as I can before I even you know get started with the parts washer um, Again, not sure if you really want to sandblast these you can I guess because afterwards You're probably going to end up in a parts washer or a spray and brake clean and all that stuff anyway, so um, You know to each his own they come out a little better in the parts washer, but if you're painting them black anyway um, which uh, I, I planned on uh, getting these super clean and then clear coating them and keeping them uh, this color but that's just it's just me being anal and, and crazy um, just paint the damn things black so throw them in a you know you could sandblast them or, or put them in a parts washer and the parts washer should be plenty to uh, keep it black uh, to paint it black so this is you know the old grease which by the time it gets to this point it's it's really not doing much so this is our whole you know the whole point of our process um, once let's see is there anything else to oh there's a on the other side of this wherever the hell I put it where did I put the other side of this damn thing oh right here all right so this uh, washer is another thing that Jesus is messed up. Yeah, see this should slide nice and easy. That, I mean this, compared to what we're gonna end up with, um, this is this is why we're doing what we're doing. This this should should definitely be nice and smooth. So even if you wash this with the parts washer and everything, hit it with a wire wheel, get it nice and smooth. Um, and like I said, my, the other tip I was gonna say was be careful of this little nylon washer here. Um, because that'll, you know, that'll easily get lost also. So 
Um, that's pretty much it for these. That's how you uh, take it off of the frame part. And then this is how you take it apart and, you know, just get all this cleaned up. So now we're going to take these over to, I'm not sure, either the sandblaster or the parts washer and uh, do the best job that we possibly can cleaning these up. And we'll go from there as far as putting it back together. All right, so if you run into something like this, if you're that unfortunate, where the actual cable housing has eroded away and the only thing left in some spots is just the nylon. Uh, there's like a nylon, uh, I'm assuming it's nylon or plastic or something, uh, insert inside there uh, that the cable rides through. Um, if you get something like this, then just call me and I'll try to find you a new cable. I believe that it's, um, like if you see where I polished that other one, I'm pretty sure it's, you could probably just make this out of a, uh, uh, what would it be, 5 16 or 3 8 uh, like a uh, fuel line. You could probably bend this yourself out of a fuel line. So I may do that um, just, just for <laughs> instructional purposes and just to see if I can, just to see if it'll work. Um, I have, you know, the bend, the uh, flaring tools and everything I can do um, um, any type of flare in the world with that nifty little tool. Um, so maybe I'll see if I can recreate this. But for the average person, just if you get some crap like this, give me a call, send me a message, I'll find you a new cable. So this might not seem like much, but this is a big win for me. Uh, proof that I still have a little bit of self-control. As I was sandblasting these, uh, their little cable runners, whatever you'd want to call it, they started to look like they almost had a brass, like they might have been made of brass. So I thought, holy smokes, I'm going to polish these up and make them amazing, um, which is totally retarded. But um, they actually... They did polish up okay, but I stopped, so that's a big win for me. I didn't do all these cables and break out the compounds and polish them all up. Maybe on a, you know, a next show car or something, I might do something crazy like that, but um, this is the type of shit that I normally would do and uh, get sidetracked and try to polish these things. So, big win for me. Okay, I couldn't help myself. I had to polish a piece up just to see how it would turn out. Um, try to get the right lighting. It's hard to tell because it's so bright in here, but actually doesn't look too bad. Um, you know, compared to the dull original cast look. So in case anybody wants to do some kind of super show car, there you go. It is possible to polish them, and that's just a couple minutes. If you took your time and really spent some time on it, you could probably make it mirror finish. So after I got it back together, I did decide to wipe it down one more time and just clear coat it. Um, sorry. So that's pretty much going to be the final product, I guess. Um, I kind of like that. Like I said, it might not even it might not look quite as good as the black. The black hides a lot of stuff, but at least this way, you know, you see it, you know for sure this thing is is actually done and done right. Um, it provides a little contrast. Not that it matters because it's under the damn seat and no one is ever going to see this uh, for the most part, but you'll know. Alright, so we've got everything all cleaned up. Um, 
I found that the best way to do this is to, well, if you want them to, to look really good uh, when they're back together, is to actually sandblast them. Um, you will get a little bit of dirt, uh, you know, in the cracks and stuff, but you're, then you put them in a parts washer or a bucket of cleaner, or you can even just spray them out with carburetor cleaner or brake cleaner or anything like that. But basically, uh, sitting them in a parts cleaner uh, doesn't get them to this to this level like this. Um, I should have took a picture of one that I had um, that wasn't that good. But anyway, um, if you really want it to look really nice when it's done, then you're gonna have to sandblast it and then just clean out the insides and you know blast everything out, or set them in a parts washer overnight, or a sonic cleaner, or whatever you have. Um, and then uh, just you know get them all clean. So anyway, here they are, all cleaned up, looking nice. Um, there are these parts. There are these parts. Um, as far as these go, um, you may want to, depending on how bad these are, you may want to hit them with a wire wheel, like on a uh, if you have a bench grinder with a wire wheel. Um, this part you definitely want to hit with a wire wheel. Uh, when it comes out of the sandblaster, it's going to kind of look like this. Uh, it's going to have that you know that pinged kind of rough. Um, texture to it so you want this to slide really smoothly so after the, the, the process that I did I sandblasted the whole thing while it was together when I first took it out of the unit um, I think the, the your best process is when you first take this out go ahead put it in a sandblaster clean the whole thing up um, best you can probably best to do that with the screw jack parts all the way in so you don't get too much sandblast stuff in there but if they're all rusty, which a lot of them are, then just go ahead and sandblast them, and then uh, then take them apart, clean all the gunk out like I showed you earlier, uh, then put them in a in a parts washer or a sonic cleaner or whatever you have to you know get all the dirt and debris and everything out, and then if you have to blast them out with some brake clean last step, then that's great. Then you take this and you polish this part with a wire wheel to get it nice and smooth, and then this part. Um, I take the uh, the metal brush, the out of the Harbor Freight kit, the, or whatever you know, whatever type of kit you have. But this is that gun cleaning kit I was talking about earlier, and polish the inside of that uh, because these two surfaces meet. You want that to be nice and smooth in there, and it's a very very tight fit, um, almost like a uh, uh, convertible cylinder. So you're really not going to get any like red grease or anything like that. You probably could spray these down with some uh, like white lithium grease, and you um, that's probably your best bet. Same with the uh, screw jack parts. Um, the, they're so tight, there's no clearance really, so uh, you can't, like if you smear red grease all over this, that's great, but as soon as it runs in and out once or twice, that's all just going to be cleaned right off. Um, I'm thinking the white lithium grease is probably your best bet, um, and then so let's put this thing together. Um, the two main things to remember um, are your this little doohickey here um, that goes down in the bottom there. Uh, do that first before you forget, and make sure you get it down in there nice and tight, um, or the thing won't close. But I mean, you'll know if you get that wrong. The other thing to remember is on the cap part. Um, the uh, the nylon washer deal so make sure you don't forget that and then um, you can uh, put a little bit of grease if you I mean I'm I'm pretty sure the way this was designed uh, back in the day they put them together and then they ran the grease through this hole and then they when they closed it all up with that big screw that's what held uh, held the grease in so technically um, this is serviceable if you take, this is one that I that I just did. Um, if you take this screw out, um, I mean it's not really the right way to do it because you still have all that old grease in. But if you if you take this screw out, you can just put some grease. You can blast some grease in through that side there, and just make sure it's it's full of grease. But I think that's a real half-assed way of doing it. But um, so. <clears throat> Where are we at? This one, and that piece is already coming out. So, um, just because I'm a little anal about stuff, I, I put a little bit of grease um, in, like underneath this gear here. 
just to make sure I'm comfortable that that's getting uh, that's getting nice and greased up in there I like that <clears throat> and then I'll just put a little dab in the hole you can't put much in there uh, because you could also run it around the outside of this but you can't put a lot in there because it's very tight clearances again and if you just glob grease in there it's kind of like the solenoid that I was talking about on the previous video if you just glob grease in there then when you try to push this in it's not going to allow it to go down the way that it should like even now I, you can kind of see it pushing itself back out and that's just with a little bit I mean that's how tight this thing is so um, just put a little dab in there and then this is the magic part this is the way I've been doing it the last few times um, oh this didn't go in okay so this is a good example if this doesn't close all the way then obviously you have a problem and most of the time it's gonna be that little freaking um, whatever that thing is a little spacer it gets jammed up and it, it falls out of place so let me just get that back in line one more time let me try jamming this in a little bit ah oh, you freaking magnetic screwdriver Get in there. All right, let's see if we can make this happen. All right, that's in there. This in here. I'm gonna hold it. I'm gonna do it this way since I'm having a hell of a time getting that piece to stay. All right, there. That's what we want. Nice and tight. And then. So there's very little grease in there. I just put a little bit around that gear just for extra precaution or whatever, just for my own peace of mind. And then I'm going to show you how I fill it up. Uh, you, I think I mentioned this grease gun that I had uh, before, but um, there's a seven-piece kit at Harbor Freight, of course. You guys know I buy a lot of Harbor Freight stuff, but... Um, you know, my, I, I do have snap-on tools and, you know, some Mac tools and everything like that. A lot of gear wrench, uh, you know, wrenches and things like that. But um, there are a lot of things that you can buy at Harbor Freight that um, work just fine. Something like a little gun cleaning kit like that comes in really handy. Um, this grease gun, it's a seven-piece grease gun accessory kit. And um, it comes in really handy. So um, I'll show you in just a second. Let me tighten this up. And um, so this piece that you see here with this nozzle works out great, especially uh, with the uh, DeWalt um, battery grease gun. It can be a little tedious if you're using the regular pump grease gun because it's such a small hole for it to come out of. Um, so it can, probably can get tough, but real quick, here is the kit. And it comes with all those different fittings, help you get around corners and things like that. And then of course here is the uh, DeWalt grease gun. So, um, but without any of that stuff, you know, it's not, not necessary, but it does help. But if you buy the, the, the grease gun accessory kit or whatever it is, it's probably 20 bucks or something at Harbor Freight. And it just clicks on, this would, this would be your regular grease gun fitting. And it just has a, um, a regular Zerk fitting in there. If I could get it out. Ugh, you see how tight it fits so it's a regular grease fitting in there and then you just attach your grease gun like normal and you have whatever other tip you need so this tip works really good for this because it creates it's got the rubber end on it so it creates kind of a seal um, and then as you pump the grease in it, it stays in there nice and tight so I'll do that real fast for you And so you see, I feel pretty confident about this being packed full of grease because it actually started to squeeze out the edge on both sides. 
and it started to come back out this hole. So this thing is completely packed full of grease properly and we shouldn't have any issues with that um, for a very, very long time. So, um, and that was, uh, this thing, that was the slow here, I'll show you guys, this is kind of cool, but that was the slow setting and then I, <laughs> I don't want to do it. If you push it all the way and you go as fast as the thing goes, it'll shoot grease across the room. Um, but uh, nifty little tool. If you already have a bunch of DeWalt tools, uh, it, the tool itself is not that expensive if you already have a bunch of batteries and everything for it. Um, and chargers and things like that. You can buy the bare tool online. I think it was like a hundred bucks or something like that. hundred and something. So that's how you put that together. Um, the rest are just the same, <clears throat> the same process over and over. Um, uh, the If you have a number four flathead, then you can it will actually fit in there where the um, where the cable goes and it'll allow you to uh, test everything so if you hold this still it'll go in and out let's see that's all the way out and that's going back in so um, and then the other thing is if you don't have that uh, you can just get one of the cables um, like this and you should have the cables laying around obviously and then you should be able to just turn this very easily without any uh, you know friction or anything so and it should be smooth no grittiness or anything like that if you feel like grittiness then you probably got some dirt in there take it apart clean it out do it again so I'm not going to show you you know obviously putting several of these together they're all the same process uh, this, the longer one, just doesn't have the, uh, the nylon washer, um, but it does have this in the bottom piece, and it's, other than that, it's pretty much the same process. Obviously, you don't have a sleeve or whatever, but, um, so now we will put them on the frame, like this, and I'll show you how that part goes, the orientation and everything. Alright, so we have our frame base pieces all painted up um, wish I uh, had the time and money to powder coat them I guess it might be a little bit better but they're painted um, and then I decided to go with the clear coat on um, on all these pieces so the way this lays out and this is going to be a part where they, you're probably going to want to come back to this part of the video because it can get a little bit confusing so the, the, the way you lay it out as you're putting it back together, um, the parts with the braces that you see here, uh, they go towards the inside. Um, first off, the, the screws, the parts you know, where the, the nut and the screw go on, uh, they go towards the outsides of the seat frame, obviously because the, cable, uh, the cables go to the inside. So you start by laying these two out like that. Um, Obviously, with the dual, the, the two two holes on the same side, I usually just do it with it facing me. So the part with the brace on, on as far as this bracket to get it lined up um, or in the right orientation, uh, that goes away from the side with the two where you're going to have the two um, screw jacks, and it also faces in. So it's going to be like this when it's all said and done. I don't know if this you know makes sense, but. Um, this is how you're going to want to lay it out. Um, we'll slide these two over here and we'll go ahead and get started with this one. So um, it doesn't matter which one of these two end pieces you put here. Um, I just went ahead and painted it with the screws in because uh, that was my way of getting them painted to, to look nice. So as we screw this in, uh, it will kind of snug this up a little bit, and then um, you don't have to make it super tight because as uh, when we come with the uh, with these pieces and the cables themselves, it'll it'll really line everything up. So I just kind of snug these down. Um, if you want to go ahead and get one of these started you can 
um, the nuts on the outside, but it's not um, not necessary at this point. I usually wait until I put the cables on. So just kind of snug that up by hand so that it's in there and it's lined up. And basically, we do that three times. And as I had mentioned earlier, as you push this in, as this tightens down, you can see where some of that grease is already kind of sucked down in there a little bit. I don't know how else to say it, but um, so as you screw this in and tighten this up, it will uh, force that you know that last little bit of grease in there, and hopefully everything will be packed nice and tight, and everything will move smoothly for a very long time. This is something you should only do once in your lifetime with this car. Just wanted to get that a little bit more snug there. All right. All right, so that is beautiful, if I may say so myself. And we'll go ahead and put the cables on. Actually, I have them right here. I don't even have to pause it. Boom. So here are the cables. And like I said, yeah, I or not the cables, but the tubes. Um, I, I was able to stop myself from polishing, um, polishing them up and trying to make them shiny. Um, oh, I do need to go grab the cables. I'll be right back. Quick tip for the roll pins. Um, they are going to be actually, you know, obviously extremely tight. Um, this is just a general tip for roll pins. Um, you see the way they're kind of designed. Most of you guys are probably familiar. Uh, if you set your vice grips to uh, just the right tension, you want that. Uh, I don't know if I can get this, but let's see here. You want that crack, that crease. You can squeeze them to just about closed. You could probably squeeze it all the way closed, but I try to, I don't want to wear the thing out or make it, you know, too, too loose. But um, use the vice grips like that, squeeze it, and then it should go in relatively easy. And then um, the same with the rest of it. So then obviously you just get this hole lined up, you know, as straight as possible and uh, tap the thing through but it can be kind of a pain in the ass. Um, another tip is to uh, wind these things out a little bit. You don't want them uh, fully closed. It's, well, I mean, you could probably do it fully closed. It's just a little bit easier. You stretch these out so that um, they fit into that groove a little bit better. Um, so I, there's probably no sense in me trying to do this on camera. It's pretty hard to do even with both hands. So uh, that's just a tip for getting it started. And you can, uh, once you get this lined up, kind of get it started in there. You can even loosen the vice grips, get a, a, a slightly uh, different grip a little bit farther back so you can get it down in there. And then just tap them in with the hammer. Be gentle. You don't want to whack everything. Try to use a smooth tip hammer. Uh, you don't want to, you know, mess up the end of the, the roll pin. So here we are. This is what it should look like roughly put together before you start putting the cables on. And you can test everything. Um, you can do it with a little cable. Jeez, you guys make some more noise. Um, you can sit here and spin it with the by hand with the cable. Or if you have, uh, I think it's a number four flathead, just the right size flathead, you should be able to test all the different functions up and down and then this is how it moves forward and backwards when it's on the track so geez, there it is thing of beauty we'll get to the next step I don't know if I even record it basically putting the cables on putting the uh, gearbox back in So this is, this is, uh, I know not everyone, it's not everybody's thing, man, but to me, 
this is uh, this is why I do what I do. I love this. I love uh, when it comes together at the end, and you know you saw what we started with, and then you end up with something like this, and you know it's gonna work, and it looks good, and it's just I don't know. This is why I do what I do. Okay, so putting on the cables. Um, this is just how I do it. I just slide the little ring over here. I put the the uh, tube on before the cables. These typically only go one way. You can't really get them wrong. Um, and then run a couple screws in here real fast. I'm sure there's a million different ways to do this, but this is how I like to do it. Um, then I will run some grease down the tube, you know me, over over grease and everything. Um, run a little grease down the tube, not too much, um, and then then I slide the cable in and then spin it around a little bit until it kind of seats down in there and you, you'll, you'll know when it's uh, fully engaged. So let's do that real quick. Doo -doo -doo. Again, the little uh, seven-piece uh, deal or whatever comes in really handy right here. And just run some grease down the tube. Then the cable, which make sure everything is nice and clean. Uh, you don't want any dirt or anything. Then I'll run the cable down. Usually work it back and forth a few times. And try to spin it around and you will... You should feel it kind of click into place and start to move the gears. There you go. So like it'll it'll drop down like an extra quarter of an inch or so. And you'll know it's in the place. The other thing that you can do is take a where am I at? All right. Take a drill, a regular drill, um, tighten it down on the cable. and then spin the cable to make sure that the that the screw jack is moving. So once it's all together and you have it laid out on the floor, um, use the screw gun, uh, you use the drill, clamp down on the cable, and uh, run everything just like you did with the flathead, just to kind of get everything moving and, and all the grease flowing in the right, uh, right spots. Uh, another tip, um, when you get it to this point, like I had mentioned, where you um, are going to use the cables to run it in and out a couple of times, when you go to install it all together on the gear system, you're going to want everything in the same place. So either all the way up or all the way down, I've just always done all the way down, um, if that makes sense to you. Um, you know what I mean? Like you don't want this side to be halfway up and the other side to be all the way down and then when you hook it into the gears it, it, you know it's all going to be lopsided so just it seems pretty pretty self-explanatory but just a tip just to make sure that you have everything uh, even and all the way down so to get the short side on um it's to me it's easier to go ahead and take this off take the back plate off um, you can do it it's just getting down in there is, is a big pain in the ass it's only three bolts to take that back piece off and then you can get these in there and it's a lot easier so there's a tip for you all right we are almost finished with the frame part and then we get to mess around with the switches. So, for whatever reason, I didn't record the back part of this. I was going to take it apart and do it again, but... Eh. Um, it's the same way it came off, basically. You have the three little uh, tabs that you put on there. Um, and then with this one, with this side, you have just this one piece with the two bolts. Once you get the cables nice and tight in there um, but on the back side uh, it's, each one has its own tab alright we are finally all done and I'm able to do 
a little comparison video. This is my favorite part, obviously, when it's all done and you can stand back and you look at how nice everything turned out and compare it to the old stuff and how it was. This isn't even one of the worst ones, but I mean, to look at something like that and it's not working, it's all jammed up and then when you're done, it takes a little time, but when you're done, you have something like this, everything works very smoothly. You have confidence in it that it's going to work probably for the rest of your life. So there's the before and after. And I hope this video helped you guys and good luck with your repairs. See you next time. Alright, so somebody actually asked me um, if I could show what the speed should be. I guess they were trying to bench test theirs uh, and they wanted to know if um, they said theirs was really slow. So I uh, figured I'd make this clip real fast of uh, going through all the motions. Obviously it's going to be a little different um, if you actually have the seat on there and then if you got a big fat guy on there uh, it, it might go a little bit slower but it shouldn't be much different. I mean they're screw jacks so they pretty much go the same speed regardless. So there we go. There is up. That's uh, both up. There's both down. Forward. Back. Down in the back. Up in the back. So this is what you're hoping for. Something around along these lines.